Uh, in this model, 99.9% .9 of what you're doing is planned, proactive. Now come the big questions. How can we be planned and proactive when we never know when the kid's gonna blow? When they're always getting upset from out of the blue? When they're so unpredictable? Here are the answers. The kid is not unpredictable. The kid is not blowing up from out of the blue. You know exactly when the kid is gonna get upset if you answer two questions right up front. And those two questions are why and when. As in, why are challenging kids challenging? Why is this challenging kid challenging? When are challenging kids challenging? When is this challenging kid challenging? Now we're gonna to get to the answers to those questions very quickly, but first I wanna just let you know, those are not the questions we usually spend most of our time talking about in our meetings and between ourselves. Those questions begin with the word what. I'll get to those soon. Let's start with why. Why are challenging kids challenging? The answer to that question has been provided to us by the last 40 to 50 years of research on behaviorally challenging kids. And believe it or not, 40 to 50 years of research can be summarized in one sentence. And here it is. Challenging kids are challenging because they're lacking the skills to not be challenging. That was it. Challenging kids are challenging because they're lacking the skills to not be challenging. Notice, I didn't say anything about the kid's neighborhood. That's not it. There's well-behaved kids coming out of the same neighborhood. Notice I didn't say anything about the kid's family. That's not it, it might not be helping. The family in the neighborhood might be, not be helping, but there are usually well-behaved kids coming out of the same family. I didn't say anything about the kid's level of socioeconomic status. I didn't say anything about the kid's country of origin. All I said, <laughs> was challenging kids are challenging because they're lacking the skills to not be challenging. Because that's what the research tells us. When are challenging kids challenging? The answer to that question for challenging students is the same as the, as the answer to all of us because we all look bad sometimes. When do we look bad? In the abstract at least, under the exact same conditions that challenging kids look bad. And when is that? when expectations outstrip skills. And there you have it. The two most important things you need to know to be helping behaviorally challenging kids better than we might be helping them now. Challenging kids are challenging because they're lacking the skills to not be challenging. We all look bad when expectations outstrip skills. All right, now to the questions we more often focus on. What questions, as in, what behaviors is the kid exhibiting to communicate that he or she is having difficulty meeting certain expectations? I'm sorry, but that's not a very important thing to talk about. That's actually not gonna give you much useful information, and yet it's one of the things we talk about the most. What the kid's behavior is, now you know, is just the signal, just the fever. Um, here's another what question that we have become obsessed with in the last 20 to 30 years. What psychiatric disorder does the kid meet diagnostic criteria for on the basis of the behaviors the kid is exhibiting to communicate that the kid is having difficulty meeting certain expectations? Believe it or not, not that informative either. 13, the DSM-5 is now this thick. A third of them are childhood psychiatric disorders. That's a lot of disorders. When I think, as it relates to the behaviors kids and other human beings exhibit to communicate they're having difficulty meeting certain expectations, I think we only need two. Lucky and unlucky. Now hear me out. What are lucky ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations? Let's start with the holy grail of lucky using your words, especially if they're the right ones. That's as lucky as it gets, but also whining, pouting, sulking, withdrawing, complaining, crying. 
Why are those ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations lucky? Well, those ways aren't gonna get you popped into time out. They're not gonna get you held in from recess, not gonna get you held after school, not gonna get you detention, suspension, expulsion, not gonna get you hit as in on the butt, as in with a piece of wood, which we still do, many people don't know this, in American public schools, hundreds of thousands of times every school year in 19 different states. Not gonna get you pinned to the ground by two to four big adults in what is still commonly known, God knows why, as a therapeutic hold. Nothing therapeutic about it. Not gonna get you thrown into a locked padded room, what's known as a seclusion. But best of all, those ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations are highly likely to elicit empathy from your caregivers. Lucky you, kid. But that's not who I've been working with for the last 40 plus years. I've been working with the unlucky variety and now your next set of synonyms for the day. I use unlucky and behaviorally challenging interchangeably. In fact, given what we so often do to these kids, I think unlucky tells the tale a whole lot better. What are unlucky ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations? You already know, but here's a sampling. Screaming, swearing, hitting, spitting, kicking, biting, throwing, destroying, running. Worse, behaviors that are severely injurious to oneself or others. Cutting, self-induced vomiting, drinking to excess, drugging to excess, ending one's own life or trying, ending somebody else's life or trying. Why are those ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations unlucky at the mild end? Those ways are gonna get you popped into timeout, deprived of recess kept after school, detention, now we're moving down, suspension, expulsion, hit, pinned, thrown. But worst of all, those ways of communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations are far less likely to elicit empathy from your caregivers. Even though the field of developmental psychopathology has been telling us for a very long time whether you are communicating that you're having difficulty meeting certain expectations in ways that are lucky or unlucky, your behavior is communicating the exact same thing. I'm stuck. There are expectations I'm having difficulty meeting. But the things we do to kids, by mere virtue of the fact that they're communicating that they're having difficulty meeting certain expectations in ways that are unlucky, are unconscionable and counterproductive and unnecessary.